Hi everyone, this is video 12 and today marks a uh, transition in today's in our course. In that mainly the first part of this course we talked mostly about functions and today we're going to start our next big topic which is on data. And to start this off, we're going to work with sequences, a type of data, and we're going to look at some syntax relating data, mainly the Python lists and tuples. And so today I'll be mainly going a bunch of operations with that. But before we start that, let's reflect on what we've done so far. So what we've done so far is that the first part of this course, we talked about expressions, assignment statements, conditional statements, and control. And then we also briefly looked at environment diagrams and execution procedures. And then from there, we went on into looking at functions. And functions are really, really important. So we defined iterative functions, we defined higher order functions, and we've also defined recursive functions. And on the topic of recursion, real quick, I want to show you something really interesting that I found out about recently. So if you ever Google recursion, you'll find something really interesting. It'll say, did you mean recursion? Okay, and if you click on this, what's going to happen? It'll, it'll end up at the same page. So this is actually an example of infinite recursion because no matter what, you're going to have the same sub-problem. So I just thought Google was having a little fun there, obviously. They are computer scientists after all, and they were just making fun of recursion right there. So I thought that was pretty cool. But anyway, now we're going to talk about what we haven't gone over. And I'm going to give an outline for basically the rest of this first part of this, the rest of this course. And so first we're going to be working with uh, working with a lot of data and storing data. And we're also going to be doing a lot of data processing and operations with this data. And then we're also going to build very large abstractions for entire systems ideas. We've already started to build a lot of exam uh, abstractions, but I'm going to show you more powerful tools to build more powerful abstractions, basically. And then the last part of this course, we're going to talk about quantifying efficiency, which we've run into a couple of times, and efficient programming. And this is going to transition then very nicely into the part two of this entire course series, which is the data structures and algorithms part of the course. But anyway, let's start with the most fundamental data idea, the pair. Okay, We have two things together. They work in a pair. So the underlying question is, what if I want to represent this pair or coordinates in two-dimensional space? Well, if you remember, we once did an example with coordinates, and I'm going to bring it back a little. So in this, what we did is we always just referred to the x-coordinate as something, and we defined the y-coordinate as something. So this would represent, th these two together would represent this pair of 1 and 2. But obviously that's a little, it's a little annoying, right? We want to have a better representation of this. So to do that, we can actually, I'm going to introduce a new syntax. Okay, so if I want to introduce a point 1, 2 in space, I can actually use this notation. It looks just like a coordinate. And this this idea is actually called, it's called a tuple. So if you call in the built-in function on, on type, on some type of basically a variable, you'll get the type of that. So if I, if I call type on 5, I'll get integer. Okay? Now, we can also define a point in another way mainly using a list. So these are the two main topics of today. We'll be talking about lists and also tuples. So I'll be talking more about the list because the only real difference between tuples and lists are that you can do a lot more stuff with lists. But there is one thing about tuples that I will talk about later. It has something to do with mutability. Obviously you don't know what that is, but I'm just letting you know that I will talk about that later. But, so, Let's actually build an abstraction for finding distances and midpoints between functions, using functions and an abstraction. So if you remember, previously in the course, we defined a way to find distance using this. And we had four parameters in this function. We managed the x-coordinate and y-coordinate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a more powerful abstraction for this. So what I want to do, my goal here, is I want to find a, have a distance function that takes in any two points. So I'm going to give it a point 1 and a point 2. And what are these points? Well, these points are abstractions for the pair that I just talked about. Okay? And so how does this work? Well, I need to first have a way to create a point. So I'm going to pass in an x and y coordinate. And using this, I can create a point. 
And what's the way we can represent pairs? Well, we can represent them using the list, as we saw. And now, I want to find, I also know that I'm going to have to work with x-coordinates and y-coordinates, so I want to find a way to get the x-coordinate given a point. Okay, and here I'm going to just throw in some syntax that I'll talk about a little in soon. So just don't worry about this part, and I'm also going to get the y-coordinate. Alright, so once I have this, well, the one thing I need to do is I need the distance between two points as defined by the Euclidean distance formula is that it's the sum of the squares of the distances between the points in laterally on the plane, and then the square root of that, of course. So I need to find a way to get a difference. So I'm going to define a function that does that. All right. So the differences between point 1 and point 2. And what I can do is I can just get the x-coordinate of point 1, and I can subtract the y-coordinate. Sorry, the x-coordinate of point 2. Okay, And this will give me the x-difference. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to define a variable x-difference, and I'm going to make it the following. And then, to find the y-difference, I'm going to get the y of point 1, the y-coordinate of point 1, and subtract the y-coordinate of point 2. Now, it doesn't it, do, it doesn't really matter which order I do this, because at the end of the day, we're going to square them, so even if there's a negative sign, it'll end up going away. And then at the end of the day, I'm going to return x difference and y difference. So this is the, maybe the third or fourth time we've seen me returning multiple things in a return statement. So how does this work? Well, it turns out that this implicitly creates a tuple. So we just talked about tuples briefly, so this is how that works. All right. So... How do I get the the distances between the distance x and distance y as before? Well, now I can just call my difference fun function, and it does all the work for me. So this is again we're abstracting things so that we define one thing once and we can use it many times. And then of course I do the same idea where I take the square root of the sum of the squares of the distance x and distance y. And then this is it. So let's test this just to make sure. So to test this, I'm just going to go through some examples. What we're going to do first is we need to create a point. So point one is going to be, let's call it three, four. Okay. And then point two is going to be six, eight. All right. So point one is a is actually a list, and point two is also a list. So this is our representation of points in this data abstraction. But now what we're going to do is we can now, instead of individually pulling out these points, we can just call distance on these two points and it'll give us the right answer. So it gives us 5. And we know 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25 squared, or that is 5. So this is correct. So that's pretty cool. Now, let's also, just to test it out, let's see what the dis difference function gave us. So it gave us two return values. So how does that look? There's tuple. So if we looked at the type of difference, we will get tuple. So this is how multiple return values work. All right. So now I also want to build something else. What if I want to find, get a way to find the midpoint between two points? So that's something we can do with points. So I'm going to put two points, and basically I want to get the midpoint. And if we remember from uh, geometry and algebra, the midpoint between two points is the x and y coordinates divided by 2, the average of the x and y coordinates, basically, for each. And then, so one thing useful that we can do is we can define the average function that takes in a number, two numbers, let's just name them a and b, and returns a plus b divided by 2. Okay, so now once we have this, well, the finding the midpoint is just a matter of getting the 
the x coordinate and y coordinate. So x coordinate is going to be the average of getting the x coordinate of 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then getting the x coordinate of 0.2. And then the y coordinate is going to be the average of getting the y coordinate from 0.1 and getting the y coordinate from 0.2. Oops, made a mistake there. Get the y coordinate from 0.2. All right. So, and then once we do that, well, we can create a point now. So we want to, of course, return a point because a midpoint is a point. So we create the po a point based on the x coordinate and y coordinate. So let's make sure this works. And if I have my two points that I defined earlier, and then I call um, I call midpoint on that. So I want to find the midpoint of point one and point two. I get the following, and this is correct. So now the cool thing about this abstraction for data that I showed here, if I ever decide that I want to make a point a two point, then all I have to do is change the way I created the point, and I don't have to change anything else in my program. So that this change reflects everything ends up short working just the way it was. So this is the this is why abstraction is so important because you can make changes to your program later and don't have to worry about other functions messing up. So okay. So let's try this again. So let's define point one and point two, and now we see our midpoint representation is different, but it all works just the same. So this is why data abstraction is so, so important.